it, it seems like wherever you have a green space in, in, intermixed within these houses, you're gonna potentially have coyotes. When I was a kid, I watched Coyote and Roadrunner and I watched Coyote constantly trying to solve the problem. And I, I see coyotes around us as sort of seeing us, as, us as a somewhat annoyance to access to the things they would just really like to enjoy without us around. <laughs> so I find them to be fascinating creatures. I also think they're real survivors. I mean, they, they're such a generalist and they're so good at just fitting in and being stealth. Known in Native American folklore as the trickster, the coyote is an animal with amazing adaptability and cunning. It can survive and even thrive in a variety of habitats, including cities and towns across America. With the protection of natural areas and wildlife habitats within cities and expanding suburban environments, the chances of people and coyotes crossing paths have risen. Despite being extensively hunted, the coyote is one of the few predators that has enlarged its range following human expansion and development in the United States. The coyote was originally found in the West, but has quickly adapted to the changes caused by humans. Coyote sightings are now common throughout the United States and Canada. As coyote numbers increase, so too does the chance for coyote conflicts with people, pets, and livestock. For a long time, ranchers have lived with coyotes and coyote predation issues. They have changed how they raise their livestock in order to reduce coyote damage. Some ranchers now use lambing pens, fencing, and livestock protection dogs. But interactions with coyotes in urban areas are a relatively new phenomenon. Um, the coyote is a very interesting species. And, you know, some people think they may only live on the golf course or in the, the very remote green belts. But, you know, they will spend a lot of time in, in the the green belts or the brushy areas, but you know we found them right in the, the backyard of of people that you know take good care of their yard. I mean they they're everywhere, even where you wouldn't suspect they could survive. Coyotes are there. Coyotes have become the top carnivore in many metropolitan areas across the country, including Denver, New York City, and Chicago. Though only occasionally seen or heard. Urban coyotes often thrive in higher densities than their rural counterparts. The damage coyotes can cause in the city is primarily to residents as pets. Uh, they get into backyards, they take a small dogs, small cats, and it becomes personal to the residents. So we want to do whatever we can to help remedy that situation, and I think this study could help us with that. Unfortunately, in some areas, conflicts with urban coyotes are on the rise. In the Denver metro area of Colorado, coyote-human conflicts have been increasing. Historically, about one person each year in the Denver metro area reported being bitten by a coyote. Since 2008, 16 people have reported being bitten. This has led to increased concerns for human health and safety and questions for wildlife managers as to how best to manage coyotes living in an urban environment. So I think the biggest reason that we're all involved is we have a large coyote population in the city. Uh, since about 2008, we've had a lot of reported conflict. So we're very interested in getting some basic ecological data on coyotes and then hopefully coming up with some solutions on how to prevent and minimize those conflicts between people and coyotes. Leading the effort to learn more about coyote behavior in the Denver metro area is Dr. Stuart Breck, a research wildlife biologist with the U.S. Department of Agriculture's National Wildlife Research Center. The NWRC is part of the USDA's Wildlife Services Program. Its mission is to apply scientific expertise to resolve problems between people and wildlife. So the project I'm working on is in the Denver metro area with urban coyotes. And the issue is that the cities and counties have been experiencing heightened um, encounters with people where coyotes presumably are becoming more aggressive and are exhibiting bolder behavior towards especially towards humans. So cities and counties and state and the National Wildlife Research Center have teamed up to address this question and these issues. What we're trying to learn are two things. We're trying to learn whether coyotes are indeed bolder and more aggressive in urban areas and what can we do about that? And the primary focus of what we can do about it is non-lethal hazing techniques um, 
for suppressing coyote behavior so that they're not exhibiting this bold, aggressive behavior towards people, especially towards people. So we're starting this project first by trapping coyotes and animals we trap. We're putting on GPS collars so that we can track their movements uh, 24 hours a day and figure out where they're going, where they're, uh, how big their territory is, uh, questions like that. And then from there, we're going to start using video uh, cameras um, as well as observational um, efforts to really look at their behavior. So we'll utilize the collars to track animals and to uh, get visual observations of, of coyotes in different situations so that we can address their uh, behavioral questions of this project. We received a grant from Adams County Open Space and we started a citizen science coyote observation coyote watch program. And what that is, is we've trained citizens on coyote, urban coyote ecology and behavior. We've trained them on using an observation form. And so when they see coyotes, they report back and we get an idea of activity. What that does for us is two things. Activity reporting is really essential to monitoring urban coyote behavior. So I know where coyotes are being active, where they're being seen during the day, but also their individual response to stimuli is really great great for figuring out how bold that individual coyote is. And then hopefully with the research project, as we do some different hazing techniques, can we change that individual's coyote response from a sort of, huh, whatever, to a, ah, you know, kind of thing. So that's what we're hoping to do. Although naturally curious, coyotes are usually timid animals and normally run away if confronted. Coyote attacks on humans are rare, and in many of the cases, attacks are a result of people feeding coyotes. People can help reduce conflicts with coyotes. There are so many, so many different ways. The, the biggest thing is we can't feed coyotes. We can't draw them into residences. We need to put our dog food, our pet food away, uh, keep our trash locked away. Anything that brings you know, a food source and brings the coyotes in is probably the biggest thing that's going to cause conflict with the coyotes in the, in the urban interface. Realize coyotes are going to be out there. And then if the coyote is acting aggressive towards you, we want you to report that. And then we want you to take some actions on your own to haze that coyote, uh, make noise towards it, throw rocks or sticks at it, make sure that it's scared of people. And that's one of the big things we want to do is get coyotes scared of people again. Dr. Breck and his research partners are hopeful their study will yield greater understanding of Denver's coyotes and provide new information to help people and coyotes coexist in a healthier and safer way. Well, as a, as a manager who deals with urban coyote conflict on a daily basis, what I hope to get out of it is, is some, some idea of our, some of our educational efforts to change human behavior. What's effective? What isn't? Is that really the right tool for solving the problem? Are there better tools for solving the problem? Can you change a coyote's behavior by changing human behavior? Uh, I just think this is going to be a great study. I think we're going to learn a lot, and I think it's, it's going to benefit the community and wildlife and people and it's it's going to be great so. you can't help but respect coyotes in this situation and how they've adapted to these environments and how they take advantage of the the little pockets of green areas and uh, and utilize uh, people's backyards and on and on and they're so they're just a, a fascinating uh, species to study as well as try to figure out ways to solutions for better coexistence to learn more about this and other predator research, please visit the National Wildlife Research Center website at www.aphis.usda.gov slash wildlife underscore damage slash NWRC.